I built a giant mountain in the center of my hardcore world. And quickly, to catch everyone up to speed, in the last episode, we conquered our world by collecting a whole bunch of different Ender Eyes by exploring our world. And then we went and we killed the Ender Dragon all 20 times. We've now unlocked all the end gateways and eventually we'll be doing an end project. But that's for a later date because today we're going to be building a mountain and finally starting our story. As this mountain is something just a little bit more special than you might think. Because this mountain, or our like summit as I like to call it, is where the world our story takes place in it's created. Now, let's not get carried away by lore just yet. Look at that little, just a little bit. The end goal for this hardcore world is to transform everything into the story I've been writing in a 10,000 block by 10,000 block area. Is it big? Yes. Are we going to be able to finish it? I have absolutely no idea. But we'll figure that out on the way. As the point of the world's creation, Starlight Summit would make sense to be close to spawn. And for terraforming, let's see if we can find a mountain to build it at. So let's just load in our spawn really quick, and oh hey, look at that. However, the problem is, is that mountain can be barely called a hill. So we're going to have to make this a whole lot bigger. Alrighty, well with all this planning done, let's go ahead and get this project started. So, in my rush to defeat the dragon, I set up practically no infrastructure. We don't have, like, any essential farms, we don't have a trading hall, even though I was trying to try something up. So, we actually have a lot of work to do, and a lot of this episode is actually going to be spent building a lot of essential farms that will be needed, not just for the world, but also for the next episode. However, keeping all that in mind, we do have a lot of farms that we need to build so i think it's probably for the best that we go ahead and create a simple to-do list and we'll figure out all the different farms we need okay we need a good number of farms first of all we need a villager trading now, villager trading farms are super important for basically any minecraft world because they allow you to be able to get a lot of items much easier than if you were to try to do it without second we need to build a gold xp farm we're not building an enderman farm because i have much bigger plans for the end all right so we need to get a core to get all the stone that we're going to need and we need a pretty simple sheep farm for wool we need a we need to build a guardian farm for sea lanterns and prismarine we're going to need to go and visit our coral reef and we're going to need to go and get a whole bunch of coral that way we can make colored sea lanterns from the charm mod. and then last of all we need to get at least one of each color of concrete powder and then we need to build a we need to build a sand duper because it also works for concrete now you're probably hearing me and you're just like wait uh sand duper yes yes i am talking about a sand duper isn't that super overpowered and lame yep but we're doing it anyways because well so there is one way or another for me to be able to get resources without destroying my world, you can bet I'm going to take it. We first are on the trading hall. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we can be able to handle the trading hall. But I decided to take a more creative approach. Because I could, as easy as, as it is to create like a super simple design for a trading hall, I much prefer to be able to try and do something more creative that fits within our world. What I'm doing is I'm setting up a building for building where I can group certain villagers together to kind of make it kind of, kind of like a shop. So to start off, we worked on the library. I kind of wanted to base it off existing structures, so I went with the mansion vibe, and that has some pretty nice and fancy libraries, and I think that emulating something like that is pretty cool. Well, I also kind of experimented with giving it like a little custom clock using Create. Because apparently, apparently there's a clockwork fairy that actually does that. So after we finished up the library, I went and got to work on the gold farm. And 14 stacks of magma blocks might sound like a lot, but surprisingly enough, it actually didn't take as long to collect as I think. And I gotta say a huge thank you to the uh, charm mod again. I have an enchantment called Collection, which just allows me to just be able to break blocks and puts it directly in my inventory. 
super helpful for this because it made it so that any man blocks that should fall into lava don't fall into lava and it just makes things just a lot easier to deal with so would recommend the farm itself didn't take too long to build other than a couple gas jump scares um but i really like the design of the farm as it aggros all of the zombie pigmen on the iron golem instead of me being afk at a farm is actually one of the most risky positions you can be in if something doesn't work as intended it could easily work on you dying and there's no way for you to stop it because you're not near your computer so after fishing in the gold farm i got to work on trying to create a radio port it seemed like it'd be probably one of the easier projects to do but for the life of me i could not figure out how to build it so I instead ended up creating a tunnel board. Now, a tunnel board uses a minecart contraption. Now, a quick note with these. Um, you can actually pick these up with wrenches. Make sure they're assembled. I don't have good footage of it, but I nearly died because I jumped in the minecart when trying to pick it up and got stuck in the contraption. Luckily, I only made it down to half a health before I got it out. And that was maybe just a little bit too close. So, um won't be doing that again. Now jumping back over to the trading hall, well I decided to start working on the farmer's building, or I guess as I like to call it, farmer's market. Is that a store or am I just making it up? Let me know in the comments. So I decided to build the barn out of uh, mangrove and oak wood. This would be able to house my bees, my farmers, butchers, beekeepers, as well as my sheep until I'm ready to actually get like an automatic wool farm set up. After doing that, I started setting up the Guardian Farm. Now, the Guardian Farm in particular was actually probably one of the scarier things I had to do. So, in order to do this, I actually had to use invisibility potions, which meant I could only wear one piece of armor. Otherwise, otherwise they could see me and I just get lasered to death. Not a fun fate, and I'd rather not die. And yeah, I decided to choose a certain design that didn't involve creating the monument. As cool as draining ocean monuments are and how popular they've been with content creators such as Silva and Looney and actually pretty much just everyone. Just everyone likes to drain ocean monuments. I decided I didn't want to do that because like, I might drain an ocean monument later. But if I'm going to drain an ocean monument, I kind of want it to be its own project. And having to do project for another project project for another project and i want to make sure that whenever i upload one of these videos i've made like substantial progress if i keep doing that i'll just keep working project 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 never get anything done my adhd is abs absolutely nuts i really like like the water effect later. i don't know why so i built the farm i built the farm really cautiously I think he had a very close eye on how much of his ability had. Luckily, building the farm actually went super smoothly without any complications, surprisingly enough. Which was a huge relief. Three lanterns are super important for this build as well as many other builds I'll be doing, so having an easy way to get them in this world is super important. After that, we went to Coral Reef and started gathering coral. I learned very quickly that if we wanted to get coral, we have to like destroy like the entire pile. And as I already mentioned earlier, I'm not a big fan of that. So I went to see if there's actually any kind of coral farm. And turns out there is. Pretty simple. All you need to do is you just need to set up a little contraption to pump bone meal into this basic water. And then you have a minecart that just kind of send, sends you back and forth. Now with plenty of coral in our pockets, we have everything we need for the colored light. Now, we need to get working on getting concrete. So I went ahead and I made a dive farm and then worked on making one of most of the colors I need for that and got one of each color of concrete powder. Now we gotta work on, on the sand slash concrete. Now, I would try to explain how this works, but I'm kind of in the dark. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Just follow the quality tutorial. There's plenty of tutorials. But all I know is that you get some sand and some pistons. You launch you launch the sand into the end portal and then somehow it duplicates and it shows up in the end. You just set up a chunk loader and then you just 
AFK in the end with the posts. That make any sense? You know, I don't. I don't even know if that made sense to me. But at this point in time, with all of that done, we are pretty much ready to get working on the mountain. Uh, the wolf. Oh, right, I did set up a wool farm as well. It's pretty easy, actually. All right, so for the mountain, we we started we started things pretty simple. I went and created a simple wireframe that kind of helped me outline the basic shape of the mountain. After after we did that, I kind of went and I further enhanced the wireframe. That way, I could split it all into just a whole bunch of different squares, and sections, and such that we can be able to use be able to kind of help us engage project. So to help speed up progress, I did a couple things that actually helped. I initially didn't plan on doing, but it actually did it a lot. Oh, where'd I go? So the first thing I did is I actually went and raided ancient city. Now, ever since I updated one point nineteen, I knew people were going to tell me to go do it, and I'm just kind of I've just been like scared out of my mind to do it, and then I just kind of like threw it. We're doing it. We did it. My luck was absolutely terrible. I only got Swift Sneak 2. Which means I'll probably have to go back at some point. But for now, Swift Sneak 2 will do. I'm okay with this. This is better than nothing. So yeah, then after about halfway, I realized that I've just been kind of dumb. Like, the whole time. I never even needed to make a quarry or a tunnel board. I only needed to make a cobblestone generator. I realized that halfway through. So yeah, I made a cobblestone generator and connected it to a furnace array. And oh my gosh, it sped up progress by like 10. What didn't I do this early? Yeah, it really helped because I didn't have to go mine stone anytime it ran out. And it really sped things up. And after I got that done, I was able to finish it just within like a couple of days. But now that we have a lot of the explanations done, let's go ahead and do a quick montage of us building the mountain. And now with Starlight Summit complete, we've already we've accomplished the objective for today's video. But let me hold true to it, I promise. Because we're not skipping the lore. We got I gotta tell you guys just the very beginning of the story. But first I need to do one quick thing. So I want to show you guys these. I'll throw these on the ground just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see what this is. 
These little stars are actually totally undying. I have a resource pack that changes them. However, I have a lot of these kind of just flying around, and I like to think of you guys as my stars. So, I'm going to be naming some of these stars after you guys. So, I'll be taking a random commenter from this video and the very first parkour video I did. And I'll be naming some of these stars after you. So, make sure you comment if you want a chance to be able to get a star named them. And if you really want to have a star named after you, like really, really, really bad, and you don't want to put, you don't want to gamble the odds of me noticing your comment, you can also support me on my Patreon. Uh, I, I'm typically not one who likes to like kill for money and such. Like monetization is always good, but it's kind of second priority for me. I'd rather just have fun and enjoy what I'm doing. But I really think that this is some. This is something I really wanted to push because I'm trying currently to get a better PC. My, I've been streaming a lot, but my frame rate just doesn't really do that well. Like I play the game at like maybe 15 frames per second when I'm streaming. So any support on Patreon would be super helpful. By supporting me on Patreon, you also get access to world downloads and schematic of various builds. So if, you, if that's something that interests you, be sure to I got my Patreon, and like it, it means a lot. Anyways, enough pushing aside the lore, let's take a deep dive into how this world was created.
And with that, everyone, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode of Part 4. I have really loved working on this big project, and I can't wait to see what else comes comes to this world. And if you guys want to be able to tune in and get more updates on how these projects are coming, be sure to check out check out my streams. I try to stream twice a week. Currently, I'm streaming on Wednesdays and Fridays, though that is subject to change depending on my schedule. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to be able to like, comment, and also, if you, if you really like my content in general, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe. It's free, and it means a whole lot and helps the channel grow. So with that, guys, I will see you all next time. And until then, back brightly.